Well, hi everybody. Um, so here's an interesting one for the psychologists and for the psychologist in you. Can a thought kill? It most certainly can. A single thought can kill you. These are true tales of my African adventures. May this inspire you, deter you, caution you, and above all, entertain you. So what happened is a farmer was attending to his fields and he was in fairly thick bush and a snake bit him. This is in South Africa, of course, a snake bit him. But he didn't see the snake. Um, this happens sometimes. Snakes are very quick, especially mambas. A bite and a retreat into the grass can happen in split seconds and you don't know what bit you. Anyway, off he went to hospital and where he didn't do very well, um, came close to death but survived. And uh, on surviving he was put in the recovery uh, room, um, not quite high care or may have been high care, I can't remember, it was some time ago. Um, and there he was, uh, not very happy, but doing well. Now, some people are very, very afraid of snakes, very frightened of snakes. And, and that makes treatment of snake bite somewhat more difficult. Particularly with mamba bites, but with cobra bites and many of the other bites. In uh, times that have gone by, uh, before the production of snake bite serum, if you got bitten by one of these, that's it. You were considered dead. You were not going to survive. And this is a terrible prospect to face. And many people face that across the African continent and still do in places. So he was bitten and he went to hospital, didn't do well, close to death and he was now recovering. A relative went to visit him and uh, early on in the chat uh, he thought he would ask the farmer if he knew what snake had bitten him because he now knew what snake it was because uh, I can't remember it was from the symptoms or if somebody had subsequently found this found the snake or seen it um, however he knew what snake had bitten the farmer and he said to the farmer, do you know what snake bit you? And he said, no, he never saw it. And he said, it was a black mamba. And the shock of hearing that was so deeply intense that the farmer died. He died of shock. Um, so his body was in a weakened state already and that was just too much for him. He had a terrible fear and the fear that was obviously passed down to him by forefathers and so on. And so hearing that was too much. So thoughts can kill. And in the realm of snake bite, yes, thoughts can kill. Here is another story. Um, in rural Africa, many people live in mud huts. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you can't go down to your local building store and order a mud hut. You have to build one yourself. So there isn't a local store in any case. So they use clay uh, in the form of mud and they make a stick structure or a stone structure and then they plaster it usually by hand in the very rural areas. Remember, people don't have money. Um, in these places and uh, so they use their hands as tools, gather some sticks, some stones, put together a rough framework and then use clay in the form of mud to plaster the structure and hold it together. Uh, then a further stick and branch and pole structure is used to make a conical roof and that they thatch with grass from the bush. So you can have a free house, so to speak, just needs a bit of labor. 
and the thatch keeps out the intense cold if they're in a cold area and also helps to protect them from heat during the heat of the day in the summer months. So they're quite practical. Mud also has a cooling effect and uh, retains temperature. Mud huts, however, are not snake proof. I don't think uh, a mud, uh, snake proof mud hut has yet been invented because the doors are never quite fitting properly and if the door fits properly then birds and rodents tend to uh, burrow into the thatch for nesting purposes and uh, when that happens of course they leave a scent trail and what happens when you leave a scent trail there is always something in the African bush that is hungry and following a scent trail to find his meal so there you have this beautiful big thatch roof looks like a gigantic nest so birds are automatically attracted to it and may burrow in to make a nest and if not that rodents climb up the side and they burrow in to make nests and also to look for food so you have this scenario now sleeping in these mud huts are the families Families, the head of the family will usually carry what is called a knop kiri, knop kiri. It is a stick roughly a meter to one meter twenty, somewhere around there. And it is fashioned out of a tree with very hard wood. And it comes from a piece of the tree which has a large protuberance when they cut it off. Um, and uh, that hard piece is fashioned into a semi-spherical piece uh, which is now attached to the end of the shaft the stick and that is used in self-defense in fighting and of course if necessary to kill snakes so inside the hut he will have his nopkeri or a machete or a spear or some other weapon and these weapons are for self-defense fighting and of course to kill any creature <clears throat> such as a snake who is unwelcome so these uh, events have taken place quite a number of times i have never heard the direct story from a relative but they they're mainly anecdotal but they have taken place because these uh, have been reported by district commissioners and uh, chiefs and other people to others of course and then the story gets into um, literature so in this particular case and there have been many like this a black mamba and I think it was in Zambia had gotten into the grass roof and pushed itself through the grass following a rodent trail through the grass thatch and he had come out and then he had gone up on the inside of the roof looking for where the trail led so that he can find the rodent and somehow overbalanced didn't have enough grip uh, no branches there to hold on to and he fell the mamba fell he or she onto the sleeping people below which was the father the mother and three children the snake then panics and starts to move around the edges of the hut of course going over the heads faces shoulders and upper bodies of the various sleeping dwellers well on this occasion the head of the family woke up and felt the snake going over him it's pretty dark in there he took up his nopkiri and tried to kill the snake at the same time bludgeoned his family to death the snake might have bitten one or two of the family it certainly bit him he died from the mamba bite but the others were bludgeoned to death they may have been bitten also but also received serious wounds uh, to the head and face and other parts of the body where he repeatedly tried to bludgeon the snake to death and bludgeoned his family to death terrible story and these things happen now Besides that, there is another type uh, piece of psychology here which you'd find interesting. There is a snake called a bird snake, twig snake or a vine snake found in Africa. It's a tree-living snake, 
often found in little shrubs and over having hanging branches around streams where they wait patiently for hours and hours and days indeed for a, a frog or a lizard or a gecko or something coming to drink and they wait there legend has it that if one of these snakes bites you this is a village legend that you will live to see the roof tops of your village then die i wonder how many people bitten by one of those actually got to see the rooftops and then died we would never know of course just an interesting thought and it probably um, arose because someone was bitten by such a snake or a similar snake in color which could have been a juvenile worm slung or tree snake and he was a very very long way from home took them about a day or day and a half to get back of course these are slow acting venoms and when they were just coming into sight of their uh, village the person may then have collapsed due to a natural course of events through the envenomation and died and that may have started the legend but now it has become a firmly established established legend that that is what will happen if one of these snakes bites you very interesting and last but not least, and this should shock anybody, I don't know what the statistics are at the moment, but they were such at one time, and that is that more people in Africa, and Southern Africa was the region given at the time, die from the bites of non-venomous snakes than from venomous snakes. They die of shock. Hey, by the way, I do have Patreon, so you can join me there too.